I don't think I've ever seen a number one overall pick as under discussed as Trayvon Walker. So in this video, I'm going to review his tape, give you my thoughts on the type of player he is after his rookie season, and grade the Jaguars pick with a year of hindsight. So let's get right into it. Before we get into the film, let's just look at a statistical overview of Trayvon Walker's rookie season. He wasn't very productive, only three and a half sacks, 10 quarterback hits, five tackles for loss, an interception, a forced fumble, two passes defensed, 49 tackles, and pro football reference put his approximate value at six. Those numbers aren't great, but they're about on par with what Jadavion Clowney did in his first healthy season, and Clowney made three Pro Bowls the following three years. Another number one overall pick defender, Miles Garrett, also saw a massive leap in production from his rookie year to his second year as a starter. Walker's pressure rate among linebackers and defensive ends who had at least 20 pressures ranked 91st out of 97 qualifying players. The pressure rate was 9.2%. So it's low. He wasn't super productive year one. But I think when you look at the past number one overall picks at defensive end, it's not over for him by any means. The reason these numbers are so low is the same reason he was knocked coming out of Georgia. He just doesn't have that many ways to get to the quarterback, and he is very raw when it comes to using his hands to create separation from a tackle. Here he's going up against Trey Pipkins, I believe that is, the right tackle, and he's going to try to swipe Pipkins' punch away right there, but he misses everything and Pipkins is able to get into Walker's frame. From this position, he's trying to lift up on both of Pipkins' elbows here to keep himself clean, but once again, he just misses everything. At this point, both of his moves have completely failed. Herbert is able to get the ball out with no pressure, and it's almost a big play down the sideline. Working versus Salyer on the other side, he tries to stab and then dip and rip around the edge, and it just doesn't look super coordinated. It doesn't look super fluid as he's trying to go from that initial long arm move to taking his hands away and trying to dip around his outside shoulder, and he just ends up too far past Herbert. You don't see a lot of swims, you don't see a lot of spins, you don't see a lot of cross chops or hump moves. It's just a lot of bull rushing and it's a lot of long arming, which admittedly lined up on the left side of your screen here. He is extremely good at. I mean, he's got real power. It's just predictable and NFL tackles know it's coming. And when good NFL tackles know something's coming, even if you're really good at it, they'll be able to beat it. Like Taylor Decker, for instance, was letting Trayvon Walker initiate contact at the point of attack he would let him straighten out his arms. And then from there, he would just calmly take his hands, grab Walker's elbow, lift up, and that would kind of kill the rush for Walker right there. Here's another example. This is versus the run, but Orlando Brown has no problem just grabbing him by the wrists, lifting, and twisting him out of the play. I look at like TJ Watt, especially when he's dealing with chips. He's stringing two moves together, in quick succession to not only beat the chipper, but the tackle behind him. At this point, Walker can maybe get past the first guy, like with Pacheco here, but it's a lot to ask of him right now to immediately turn that into a second move that gets him to the quarterback past the tackle. So chips are pretty effective ways to shut him down. There are glimmers of hope though. Here he once again is going up against Trey Pipkins, and this time his swipe actually kind of lands, and then he's able to get into a rip, wins the outside shoulder, and makes it past Pipkins pretty quickly here. The ball is just out fast from Herbert. Let's watch it once in full time right here. To be fair here, going up against number 71 from Tennessee is kind of like creative mode for edge rushers. Everything you do kind of works. He's not a very good player, I think. But this is a great move from Trayvon Walker regardless. 71 goes to shoot his hands. Walker's able to chop him down, get into his rip right away, and this should have drawn a holding penalty. I don't think it does, but he's got him pretty well beat here, and only by hooking his arm around Walker's neck is the tackle able to prevent a sack here. So he's shown some ability to win around the arc, which is going to be key going forward. But the main thing is always going to be that bull rush. And even if you know it's coming, it's still pretty scary. And his technique on bull rush is good, right? He knows how to sync up his hands and his feet. He usually takes a couple steps forward and then he dips his shoulder, starts gaining momentum and converting speed to power and usually strikes with his hands at a pretty good time and a pretty good place. And here he just creates tons of knockback, throws Taylor Decker right into Goff. Once again versus Decker, he's able to convert speed to power. He drives off that back foot 
just as he's extending his arm and getting into Decker's chest. He has great length. He's able to have the reach on most tackles. And then from there, he even gets his outside arm on Decker's shoulder, turns the tables, and is able to lift that up. So Decker's position isn't as solid. And then from there, once again, he's able to drive Decker back into Goff, create a muddy pocket for Goff to throw from, and it's incomplete. Walker can be so powerful that even when he loses, he's still able to be useful. On this play versus Salyer again, he misses everything on the swipe and Salyer's in a good position. Walker's hands are not connected to Salyer at all, and yet he's still able to just kind of twist, slip his shoulder between Salyer's hands, and then just kind of burrow his way right through his frame. And without the use of his hands, he's still able to push Salyer back into Herbert here and create a somewhat difficult pocket, which of course Herbert stands in because he's Herbert. But again, some quarterbacks, that would be enough to move him off their spot. So that's kind of the rundown on him as a pass rusher. It's basically the same as his scouting report coming out of college. So you're hoping for more growth next year. And then obviously his length and strength gives him a high ceiling as a run defender as well. Here he's just setting an absolutely nasty edge with eyes in the backfield as he keeps himself clean from the left tackle. The run doesn't come his way, obviously, but if it did, he's pretty ready for it right there. The Jaguars run a 3-4 a lot of the time, and he'll be standing up as an outside linebacker way out wide, which earns him some matchups with tight ends. And tight ends, of course, just have no shot at blocking him. He's just too powerful. Walker consistently creating knockback helped the Jaguars field the sixth best rushing defense in terms of EPA per play. In 2021, Jacksonville ranked 21st in that particular area. So I think that Trayvon Walker could do a little bit more to have more individual success. Obviously, as time goes on, he's going to be recognizing things faster. He'll be able to disengage as he gets more moves. But drafting him had the desired effect on their rushing defense. And then the other thing about Walker that you probably heard around the draft is he's actually pretty comfortable dropping into coverage, which he did 80 times last season, according to PFF, averaged about five or around there, coverage dropbacks per game. And it's still true that he does look way more comfortable than he should as a big defensive lineman maneuvering out in space like this. So with a year of hindsight and with all that being said, how would I grade the Trayvon Walker pick a year later? Well, I think it's pretty clear at this point that he wasn't the right pick at number one. Sauce Gardner was the best guy available. He went high in the draft. He should have been the selection. That guy looks like he's on pace to be a Hall of Famer. So they made the wrong choice. But as far as the edge rushers go, between Walker and Thibodeau and Hutchinson, who were the three main guys at the top of that class, I don't think Walker has cemented himself as better than Thibodeau or Hutchinson yet. Uh, going into it, it seemed like most people thought Thibodeau and Hutchinson were more pro ready uh, and Walker was a really raw prospect that kind of took everybody by surprise when he went number one and year one he wasn't as productive as a pass rusher as Thibodeau and especially Hutchinson um, but I think that that's somewhat okay we knew that going into it that Walker was more of a project we saw the traits we saw the bull rush he looks like he could be one of the most powerful edge rushers in the entire league we saw the impact that he had on the run defense we saw him able to drop into coverage the potential is still all there with him and I still see the vision of Walker as one of the best edges in the league more than someone like Hutchinson even though I think Hutchinson is better right now I think that Walker is on pace with his development track. He's in a very average spot. He's not ahead of schedule. He's not lagging way behind schedule, I think, in terms of how I expected his rookie year to go. So overall, I think I've got to give it a, a C grade. That's a passing grade to me. That's an average grade to me. When I watch Trayvon Walker, I definitely see someone talented. I definitely see a useful player in that defense. I don't think that he's going to be bad. I think that he's pretty good or at least uh, an average starter already with a lot of room to grow. But I don't see a number one overall pick. I don't see the best defender on the team as soon as he steps on the field, which is kind of what you want to see from a first overall pick. But we saw Miles Garrett break out in year two. We saw uh, Jadavion Clowney br break out to some extent in year two healthy year two. And I think that Walker, that's definitely within the realm of possibility. I'm not writing him off, even though his numbers weren't great his rookie season. I still think that you've got to be patient with him, just like we knew you had to be when he got drafted. And I think one day he could develop into a great pick. But right now, I think you got to give it a pretty average grade. So I'm giving it a C. 
And I think that's pretty fair. And that's all I got for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I know I haven't uploaded too many of these recently. That's going to change going forward. I'll be on this every single week. So I'll see you next week with another video. Thanks for watching and uh, subscribe to Stay Hot if you haven't.